This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas. Who's going to eat every mouthful of this? It's Brian Houston Sports <laughs> Radio Live. Here's Brian Houston. Yep, on this day in 1940, Hattie McDaniel became the first African American to win the Oscar. Best Supporting Actress for Gone with the Wind. And you're here on uh, Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM. Thanks again to the folks from the uh, Professional Athletes uh, Against Childhood Obesity. We're glad to have them on, and we hope that you will check out their Facebook page. Once again, I posted it to my Facebook page as well so that you can get a chance to uh, see what they're all about. Interesting story came out in the uh, Dallas Morning News today. Uh, it uh, quoted a couple of former Texas A&M coaches talking about their recruiting experiences uh, here in the state of Texas. They are now over in California. And so we thought it would be kind of fun to uh, bring the writer of that article from the Dallas Morning News on to uh, talk a little bit about what uh, what that article had to say and, uh, and why those coaches said it. And so right now on the... Uh, APEC VIP Hotline, Cutting Edge Training for the Serious Athlete, APECGO.com. Joining us right now, Sean Lester. How are you doing, Sean? I'm great, Brian. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for coming on today. So kind of uh, give the folks who did not have a chance to read the article, um, what, what was it all about? Tell us about it. It, it basically sums up uh, there was an interview with, uh, Nick Toth, who is actually a inside linebackers coach at A&M under Tim DeRuder, who Tim DeRuder took over the job at Fresno State. So the background to all this is that um, Kevin Sumlin gets hired at A&M. They pretty much wipe out the entire coaching staff, and Tim DeRuder brings Nick Toth with him to Fresno State. And then in this interview, they're talking about um, you know just the the recruiting process, uh, the off season process of what Fresno State has been going through, and all of a sudden Nick Toth decides to address, he's the new defensive coordinator there at at Fresno, and he decides to address that they have been better received uh, than they were originally at A&M. He he goes on to sort of uh, call out uh, his his former team, and uh, just it just it seemed like uh, an interesting take, and um, maybe things didn't end as well as we knew it didn't end well with Mike Sherman, but did it not end well with the rest of the staff? And uh, this may be a telling uh, sign of that. Well, it just seemed like an interesting thing for uh, a coach to say because, you know, how people tend to uh, they tend to travel these roads again, and it's certainly a likelihood that Toth or DeRuder could end up back in Texas. And, and it kind of seemed like it was a shot not only at A&M, but also at uh, Texas high school coaches in general. Am I misreading that? No, I, I absolutely agree. He, he, it, was, it, was, it wasn't necessarily DeRuder. DeRuder didn't, hasn't said anything yet. Um, he, he didn't you know, make any comments on this. It was just Toth. So Toth does say, you know, his almost direct quote is, when we got to A&M, high school coaches wanted to give us their one AA players. So I'm hmm. not sure if that means that, that you know, the, the high school coaches in Texas didn't think that A&M deserved their best, best athletes in comparison to maybe some of the guys out in California, or, or I, I just, I have a hard time really deciphering that, but I mean, from what I understand is that he, they didn't have a good reputation, and they were getting guys that, or they were going to be given guys from coaches as far as recommendations that were not on the level that they wanted to be on, being a Big 12 school that should be recruiting the best in the state. Well, I, I, and I had some Aggie supporters who uh, tweeted uh, different questions and things like that, and one of them was saying, well, ha- where's the proof? Because A&M had terrific recruiting classes, according to these Aggie supporters. I mean, how would you grade the Aggie recruiting classes under Mike Sherman, and is there anything to back up Toth's claims? Well, I think the one, the one thing that would support his claim was that before Sherman was Dennis Franchione, and he left the cupboard empty. Uh, there was there was nothing really for Sherman to work on. Um, you know, the program was kind of on a downturn, and he really did have to pick up where uh, Sherman really did have to pick up where Fran left off. But with that being said, I I don't I'm not sure where the context of all this really comes from. I mean, 
uh, he, he, they did have to work, and, you know, the reception may have been pretty bad when Sherman brought in guys like Toth and, you know, DeRuiter, and, you know, they may have had a bad rap because of Fran, you know, as a school. And I, I could see that. I, I just don't know where, where you know, the, I mean, the, the support for A&M football is huge. So I, I don't know if, you know, he was just talking on high school coaches or if he was talking about, you know, the support from, you know, fans even was bad. I, I think they recruited fine, though. I mean, Sherman knew what he was doing, and, you know, he was you know known as a good guy. He just couldn't produce on the football field. His recruiting classes were, you know, definitely doing just fine. I mean, this last class was a result of him and then some of someone's, you know, guys that he picked up. But, you know, I think he did just fine recruiting. So it, it does seem a little off, and I think the fans that, you know, question it uh, – have a right to question these comments and you know some of the things that he said later in the article are questionable as well you know he was a inside linebackers coach and he's questioning the linebacker core which as many people know the number two draft and uh, draft pick last year was Vaughn Miller an Aggie linebacker so I I'm, I just I don't know if you know there was something in between there that we aren't seeing that you know they left on a bad foot but um, he certainly feels strongly about his Fresno State team and and uh, not maybe not so much about A&M. Well, yeah, and and it it could be that he's just trying to uh, butter up the uh, California f- guys, but probably went the uh, wrong direction with it by trying to make comparisons between his reception in California and Texas. I I, I guess. I, I agree. I mean, he he probably he I don't think it was uh, a direct shot. Um, he he may have been making comparisons, and you know he he was probably you know just trying to you know compare things because I mean that's what he knew, and now this is what he knows here at. Um, here at Fresno, you know, there at Fresno, but uh, it was just, it, it is interesting, and for, you know, for him to say that the, these two guys at inside linebacker that he has now are, you know, real leaders, they've been rock solid, that's fine for, you know, for you to say and be confident about your program, but his last quote of that paragraph was, both those guys are better than anything we've played with the past three years at A&M, and that, that just, it kind of blows your mind. I, I, did, I didn't expect that, that's for sure, and I don't think that's yeah. what many other people were expecting from a Fresno coach who's obviously optimistic about you know, what he can do, but that team went 4-9 and nine last year, 3-4 and four in the Western Athletic Conference. I, it just The comparisons don't really add up to me. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that sounds more like trying to drum up some excitement where there wasn't a whole lot. Exactly. I, I, yeah, it was, it was definitely, you know, stirring the pot a little. And, you know, I, I, like I said, I just I consider and I, I in the back of my mind, I just wonder if there's anything there that, you know, is any was there any frustration that someone didn't keep some of those guys. He only kept one guy on Sherman staff and he's gone now to the Oakland Raiders staff. So, the, you know, there's no one remaining from Sherman's um, assistant. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Maybe I'm looking too deep into it, but. You know, certainly an interesting story to come out of, you know, A&M for an assistant coach to be stepping up and saying that, you know, now he's at a school that isn't exactly a power. Okay, and uh, ba- I, I don't know how much time you've had a chance to spend with Coach Sumlin, and I don't know how you would find this out, but just based on what you know right now, I mean, how do you think the new staff is being received by high school coaches in the state of Texas? I think it's. I think it's wonderful. Um, I, I personally have not been able to necessarily, you know, talk with Coach Sumlin. Uh, you know, he's, he's limited time-wise as far as, you know, media availability. Um, this is kind of an odd time of the year for that kind of stuff. But the staff that he's brought in is just out of this world recruiting-wise. Um, I believe it's David Beatty, um, who is going to be a defensive backs coach, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. This is all just I'm trying to recall everything, that all these guys that he's added, because this is a brand-new staff. They wiped everything out. But David Beatty, I believe, was a former Texas high school coach. So, you know, you bring in a guy like that, he's got all kinds of knowledge throughout the state. Basically, he brought in, and he addressed it on signing day, that he brought in coaches that were great coaches and great recruiters. He said, you know, there's certain coaches that you bring in that are – one or the other, or, you know, great coaches, not so hot at recruiting, and you rely on other coaches to do the recruiting. No, he wanted guys that did both. And as far as I can tell, he is extremely confident in his staff, and everyone, you know, in College Station is is fully backing that staff. As they added guys, you know, slowly but surely, as they added more assistants, the, the talk began to grow, which, you know, there's not normally a whole lot of talk as far as, you know, who's your inside linebacker coach now or who's your – you know, quarterbacks coach now, but 
that kind of stuff definitely got brought up when the staff was being hired, and I think it's been received really well. And the future seems to be bright, but you know, as as Sherman proved, it's all about on the field. So it'll be interesting, but I think it is being received well, and these new coaches are um, you know close with these. Um, Texas high school coaches, and it's showing. Anan is already recruiting, so for for you know years to come. And, and we'll find out how good good the former coaches did as we watch Fresno State in the years to come, because they're following a pretty tough act. I thought that uh, Fresno State had a pretty nice program and probably uh, made a mistake hi- uh, firing the coach they fired, uh, because they've always been pretty strong nationally. Yeah, they they didn't seem to be. Uh, it was it was an odd. I think they've. They had just sort of gone through, you know, a downturn, you know, maybe two years or so of, you know, bad play or play that they weren't mm-hmm. necessarily proud of, uh, you know, not so hot records or, you know, what have you. But, um, you know, it was it may have been a quick move to, I think their previous coach was there for, you know, 12 years or something. a long time. You know, he had yeah. a long ten- tenure or something like that. So, so um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they will do necessarily in the future. Uh, I think Tim DeRuiter is a, a phenomenal coach. He did a great job uh, turned the defense around, cer- certainly in his first year after coming to a m from uh, Air Force. So I think he, he definitely has uh, potential, and it's his first head coaching job, and should be interesting to see how they do as well. I agree. Well, interesting stuff, no question about it, and uh, we do appreciate you coming on today, Sean, to talk about it. It was very interesting, and uh, we uh, hope to talk to you again in the future as we follow the Aggies moving into the uh, SEC and how that's going to work out. I appreciate you all having me on. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. My grandparents are actually uh, live in the Big Sandy and uh, uh, Holly Lake <laughs> Ranch area, so I, I sure to tell them to tune in. So that was it was very cool, kind of you know somewhat close to home. So I appreciate it very much. Hey, great to have you on, and uh, tell your grandparents uh, hello for us, and we appreciate that. All right, no problem. Thank you again. Uh-huh. Uh, Sean Lester from the Dallas Morning News on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM. We'll take a break, and we'll come back to Dudley's Cajun Cafe in Longview in just a moment. This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas.